Meanwhile, in this building at Fort Worth, Texas, another great Air Force achievement of a different kind was taking shape. The B-36, the first genuine intercontinental bomber. No aircraft had ever had a wing spread like this, 230 feet. That's equal to a distance from home plate in Yankee Stadium to a point over 100 feet beyond the second base. No bomber ever had such tremendous fuselage space. From nose to tail and from wall to wall, the equal of 10 good-sized living rooms. The B-36 was first conceived in 1941, and by 1946, she was ready for her first test flight. Big, wasn't she? Her main function was to carry bombs but she went up well armed with eight gun turrets, each mounting two 20 millimeter cannon that could fire explosive shells as well as armor piercing projectiles. That was more and better armament than any other bomber ever had. Being one of the most complicated engines of war ever built, the B-36 needed a crew of 16 specialists. Every one of them was a man of great experience and skill. And they worked together for long periods and achieved a high degree of teamwork. It was an honor to be picked as a member of a B-36 crew. And the men who flew the big bomber came to admire her. Talk about power. In the late stages of development, the B-36 had six piston engines of 3,800 horsepower each and four jet engines each capable of 5,200 pounds of thrust at takeoff. The big bomber had a much greater carrying capacity than any other aircraft so far produced. There was room in the four big bomb bays for 100 500-pound bombs, or when tremendously big ones were needed, the cargo could be two bombs, each weighing 21 tons. With its fuel load of 21,000 gallons, the B-36 had tremendous range, 10,000 miles without refueling, and a combat radius of more than 4,000 miles. Even at great altitudes, and at more than 400 miles an hour, the B-36 was a steady flying platform, a stable and accurate bomber. Over the target. With its speed, armament, and high altitude capability, the B-36 became the Strategic Air Command's Sunday Punch. It gave the Air Force one of its best means of winning friends and influencing people. Largely because of this aircraft, the Strategic Air Command was the first military organization in history that could assault the heart of a remote enemy country from stateside bases within hours after the outbreak of a war. proved to be a great airplane and there was no question as to where it belonged right where it was in the United States Air Force <laughs> 